Gaming, Radeon. Productivity, NVIDIA. Productivity with a bit of gaming, NVIDIA. And this, uh, still gaming. So for this video, we'll be going through the performance differences between the Radeon RX 7900 XT against the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 Ti. Now, in terms of specs for these two graphic cards, it's quite hard to really tell their differences as Radeon and NVIDIA themselves like to use their own um, term for their specification, such as Radeon will be using stream processor, whereas NVIDIA will be using CUDA cores. But instead, let's focus on the specs that they have in similarity and tell their differences. And we'll begin with VRAM, which both of these also will have. In that, the Radeon RX 7000 series, the 7900 XT, will have 20 gigs of GDDR6 VRAM, whereas the 4070 Ti from NVIDIA will have 12 gig of GDDR6 VRAM. Now, this doesn't really tell us the performance difference between these two graphic cards. However, for those who like to mod their games or like to play in 4K resolution and in hopes that buying these cards to play in higher resolution such as 4K, since these cards are perfect for that, then it's good to keep in mind that having higher VRAM will help in those situations. Now, for the Radeon 7000 series of graphic card, they'll be using the DisplayPort 2.1 standard, which means that they'll be able to output 4K 240Hz natively, whereas the GeForce RTX 40 series of graphic card will only be utilizing DisplayPort 1.4a, meaning it will be displaying 4K 240Hz with DSC, which means there will be some data compressions here and there for the RTX 40 series of graphic card. Now, on to the good stuff, and let's talk about the performance differences with the Radeon 7900 XT and the 4070 Ti. And what better start than the gaming performance difference of these two cards? So here is our test configuration slash setup. And let's jump into the bank. Machines, fancy spear, delightful freckles. Some even say you have a conscience. <laughs> How extraordinary. From the benchmarks, we can see that the 7900 XT and the 4070 Ti is quite evenly matched with the 7900 XT coming out ahead by a few percentage points, but overall quite similar. However, we can see that at higher resolution such as 2K and 4K, the 7900 XT will have a slight benefit ahead of the 4070 Ti, specifically in Cyberpunk, Red Dead Redemption 2 and Resident Evil 8. 
Could this be a limitation of the 12 gig VRAM from the 4070 Ti? It's certainly something to keep in mind if you're planning to play into more 4K resolution of future titles. But then of course, let's talk about the ray tracing performance for these two graphic cards. And here of course, the 4070 Ti as expected will be able to beat the 7900 XT. However, the 7900 XT surprisingly isn't too far back from the 4070 Ti, except for Cyberpunk, which the 4070 Ti or Nvidia in this case really shows that its performance advantage in ray tracing games. Are you listening? Hey! What the? So then, let's move on to the productivity benchmark so that we can see as well how the 7900 XT performs in an area where Nvidia is the one that usually dominates. Now, let's begin with Puget Bench for Premiere Pro. Now, Adobe software has generally worked better with Nvidia GPUs thanks to the integration of CUDA to their software. So, we can expect the 4070 Ti to outperform the RX 7900 XT. And, oh wait, is the overall score of the 7900 XT GPU actually higher than the 4070 Ti? Well, it will appear so. It seems that the 7900 XT is able to do a lot better in live playback score and being quite close on the GPU score. For Puget Bench for DaVinci Resolve, the 4070 Ti outperforms the 7900 XT when it comes to Fusion score, making its overall score more than the 7900 XT. But in terms of their 4K media score, it's almost even between them. When it comes to Photoshop, the 7900 XT outperforms the 4070 Ti with it having a higher GPU score compared to the 4070 Ti. So from the test conducted with Puget Bench, it seems that this generation of Radeon GPU has tightened the gap when it comes to video and photo editing workload against NVIDIA. We actually like to verify these benchmark claims as well, as at the end of the day, benchmark only gives us a score and estimation on how these cards perform. So we wanted to try out on real life and real world scenario of how these cards will perform in a video editing environment. And with that, I invited our in-house video editor, Amirul, to try out the difference between the 4070 Ti and the 7900 XT that we have over here in our test bench. <coughs> Amiru here. <laughs> okay, okay. But for real, based on the feedback from our video editor, the user experience is still better on the 4070 Ti, as he told me that in live playback, he feels that the 4070 Ti runs smoother overall. And it seems more straightforward when it comes to effect settings as well as Radeon seems to require more adjustment when you need to put an effect on the video. The video we test rendered was our previous review video on the first player SP7 casing, as well as the Ryzen 7 7700X review. And it seems that despite having a higher score on their benchmark, the 4070 Ti consistently rendered 13 to 20% faster than the 7900 XT. So for the next productivity test, we tested Blender, to test the differences between these cards when it comes to 3D performance and applications. And honestly, there's not much difference between these two GPUs. Honestly, you're better off getting a more powerful processor if you're planning to do long-term 3D renders on software like Blender. Now, it certainly surprised us of what the 7000 series of the 7900 XT was able to achieve for productivity benchmark scores. That being said, however, in real-world applications and real-world test scenarios, it seems that NVIDIA is still the way to go for video productivity work. 3D work, not so much, as both of these graphic cards are perfectly capable for that. Well, when it comes to pure gaming of rasterization, it seems that the 7900 XT is the better choice here, as it generally outperforms the 4070 Ti in rasterization games. And of course, having DisplayPort 2.1 is a safer bet for 4K, gaming in the future for higher refresh rate. And of course, using the O8 pin, which is the six plus two pin over here, makes it an easier upgrade path compared to their Nvidia counterpart. Nvidia GPUs does offer extra features that Radeon GPU just doesn't have at the moment, such as better ray tracing performance and support, 
DLSS, which is their deep learning super sampling technology, allowing you to play games at a higher resolution with their AI upscaling technology. As well as things like NVIDIA Reflex, if you're an esports gamer, giving you better latency in competitive games such as Apex Legends. As well as having RTX Voice and NV Encoder, making it better for perhaps video streamers and editors out there. We hope that you'll find this video helpful, and if you did, do remember to give us a like, follow us on Facebook, and share this video out to all your friends and family. That's all from us today. Stay tuned for our next video. Bye, and stay safe. Amiru say NVIDIA better for video editing. Don't go radio on. He told me to say one. Cut. I just like to point out that uh, our previous videos giveaway for the first player SP7 casing is still ongoing. So, to check that out.